Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. We welcome you to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ to remind us one another that the Lord is a wall of fire around us. We are meditating upon the various works of the Lord, how he had intervened in human history and how he has the whole world in his hand, how he personally came in the human form so that our faith would be established, especially during these difficult times. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father God, we pray thee that you remember us. Talk with us today so that we can know you better. In the name of our Lord Jesus of Nazareth, we pray thee. Amen. Friends, please repeat these words after me. Open my eyes so that I can see wonderful things from your word. Open my eyes so that I can see wonderful things from your word. Praise the Lord. We'll turn the pages to the book of Matthew, 14th chapter, verse number 22 onwards. We see in verse number 22, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. For the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on, to the, sea, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. What was the problem for these disciples? It was not essentially the raging sea. It was something walking on the waters. They thought it was a ghost and they cried out of fear. And the Lord said, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, come and me to come to you on the water. Lord, if it is you, come and me to come to you on the water. Now, she, no, 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 when the Lord Jesus said, it is I, the disciples calmed down and Peter took this opportunity with all uh, freedom. He said, Lord, if it is you, please command me to walk up on the waters. And the Lord said, come. So when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now this is something, a miracle which is happening there which is happening completely, which no one can ever imagine. We expect great things from God. Peter asked the Lord something which he never imagined in his life. He says, Lord, if it is you, command me to walk up on the waters. And he stepped out of the boat. Maybe you would have sat at the edge of the boat put both his uh, uh, feet onto the water. They were really sturdy and he could feel as if the water was like some concrete floor and he slowly stood up and that must have been an amazing experience for Peter. He put one step forward, the other step forward. He was coming towards the Lord. Now, see, what does Peter ask the Lord? He says, command me to come to you now, Peter, his focus is to come to the Lord, is to come to the Lord. His focus is not upon walking on the waters. Of course, that's what he's meaning here. 
But when he asked the Lord, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, what is the focus in Peter's mind? The focus in the mind of Peter is the Lord Jesus and that he has to go to the Lord Jesus. That is the uh, 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 focus in his mind. Now, as he began to walk on the water, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. When he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And the beginning has come for him in his life to sink. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Now, what is the problem? Why did this happen to Peter when he was experiencing the greatest experience in his life? Why did he begin to sink? The Bible says, when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. When the wind was boisterous, he was watching that, he observed that, and he was afraid, and he began to sink. Now, what is happening to the mind at that juncture? The mind is no longer on the Lord Jesus. And the mind is upon the wind which was tossing the waters and creating great waves to rise up. Now, Peter cries and says, Lord, save me. There, are, there is a vast difference between these two prayers which Peter has prayed. In the first instant, in the safety of his uh, uh, boat, he prayed and said, Lord, command me. If it is you, command me to come to you. Command me to come to you on the water. That is like a small child wanting to experience trying to drive the car, trying to drive the bike, even before the age permits. Little children, they drive imaginary cars. And now is the time when he is going to walk on the water. It is great faith. But great faith, in such a way, it is focused on Jesus. Is it an experience he is looking for? Or is he looking for a miracle? But Peter asked for that. You ponder in your mind. Peter asked for that. And when he began to walk on the water, his focus shift, shifted from the Lord Jesus. He was no longer focusing upon the Lord Jesus. He was focusing upon the waters. He was focusing upon the waves. And that the wind was boisterous. Now, the problem is not in the waters. The problem is not in the waters. The problem is in the wind which was tossing the waves. The problem was in the wind which was tossing the waves. Now, you and I, in this life's ocean, this life is not a bad thing. It is which God has given us. It is a gift unto us. But the problems which toss this life here and there, they trouble our hearts. Some people, when they're afraid, they call for those whom they trust. Little children, they ask parents to accompany them to the washroom because they're afraid that there is something lurking there. It is a fear which is haunting their hearts. There is nothing. Somebody died of a heart attack thinking that it was a snake. But later it was understood it was not a, a snake but a belt which had fallen down there. Beloved people of the Lord, fear plays with our mind. And fear has a place in our hearts 
when we begin to imagine when we begin to think upon the future now fear comes because of two reasons past experiences and the unknown future both these things are a complication when we dwell much upon that the lord jesus christ says very clearly in matthew 6 chapter verse number 34 therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day its own trouble sufficient for the day its own trouble tomorrow is something which we have not lived yet the past we have lived and it is gone it is a memory memories and the uncertain uncertain future they would play upon our mind we living in this ocean of life maybe during the lockdown time now thinking about the future there are many uh, fears which come upon the mind upon the heart impressing upon the heart and making people to be afraid people are afraid about the finances people are afraid about the health people are afraid about where they would go if they're going to lose their job maybe they go might be losing they're going to lose their job maybe they're going to have a tough time in the days to come this word recession is once again coming in human vocabularies uh, uh, memory and parlance in this present time the stocks have fallen down and not just that many people have lost some millions and millions of dollars and not just the rich people the poor people maybe they do not have funds in their hands that too would be a trouble in their hearts in their minds now what about the future what about the future beloved people of the lord the lord jesus christ has a beautiful name in isaiah 9 he is referred to as the everlasting father everlasting father what do you mean by this word everlasting father in the hebrew word we find one particular word which says uh, which refers to this uh, the in the original text it says olam it is the dark unfathomable future which uh, is unknown to the human mind in the present day but yet the lord jesus christ is called as the everlasting father the lord who has the future in his hands the unfathomable future in his hands peter was afraid what did he cry lord save me because he was sinking when you are afraid you'll forget your natural capabilities why not isn't peter a, a, a fisherman doesn't you know swimming he knows swimming he can swim he swam in the sea and came towards the lord jesus when he came to know it was the lord beloved people of the lord he is a very tough rugged swimmer for certain but what has happened what makes him to cry and say lord save me lord save me why does he cry why does he ask like this because when you are afraid your natural capabilities are forgotten the fear engulfs the mind the fear that is the time when you have to rise against the situation when you are afraid is it wrong when you are afraid is it <laughs> is it a, a problem When you look into the original text this word fear literally means in a way saying the imperfect the imperfection fear brings imperfection in our lives we become imperfect when we are afraid the heart pounds the blood gushes and that's the time we have to fight the fears many of us must have been afraid when we were small children we would ask somebody to accompany us we are people of the lord even when people grow old when they grown up in age even then some are afraid 
They're afraid about so many things. They're afraid about the children, about the future, what would happen. Beloved people of the Lord, what does the Bible teach us about this fear, which would really trouble the heart, the mind, and then make the person to become helpless, weak, crestfallen, and to crumble down, and sometimes to lose heart and to die? The problems, if they pester a person, when they're really troubled about that, some go and commit suicide. He, that is not the solution for a fear or for uncertainty. The Bible says in Psalm 56, verse number 3, the man of God says, Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Are you afraid? Are you afraid about your future? Are you afraid about the world scenario, how it would change, in what way it would become, what are going to be the uh, situations? Remember one thing, the man of God says, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. What time I am afraid, I trust in you. To be afraid, it would be natural. But to put that into the hands of the Lord, telling him all our fears, that is the key for us in our lives. The man of God says in Psalm 34, verse number 4, I sought the Lord. Psalm 34, verse number 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Little children are not ashamed to call mommy, daddy, elder sister, elder brother, please accompany me to the washroom. I'm afraid. They would hold and they will beg. They will beg. They would want somebody to accompany them. Beloved people of the Lord, this fear haunts many of us. As we grow big, we are afraid about so many things. Some, when they are going to get married, they are afraid about the married life. Some are afraid about pregnancy. Some are afraid about growing up children. Some are afraid about the finances. Some are afraid to, to face somebody, to face a, an interview. Some are afraid even to face the day. Some are afraid to face a surgery. There might be someone who is afraid because they are having a sickness, a disease in their life. These kind of breathing problems, they trouble a person when the person is afraid. The Bible says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears and delivered me from all my fears. All around there might be fears in my life and I'm not going to be afraid. And I'm not going to be afraid because he delivers me from all my fears. Beloved people of the Lord, there are situations when we are afraid. You know what? The heart is overwhelmed. The heart is overwhelmed with one particular thought and that really crushes the spirit and the person would be full of that anguish and maybe they're going to lose the strength. They might get crestfallen. The man of God says in Psalm 61 verse number 2, What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. When my heart is overwhelmed, oh Father, Make mm -hmm, from the ends of all the earth. Lead me into safety. Lead me to the rock, the rock that is higher. Lead me to the rock, the rock that is higher, higher than I. You know what? The man of God knows the secret. 
when he is not able to climb. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock which I will not be able to climb, but make me to climb and lead me up to the rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This man is overwhelmed. What is the secret for a believer? Fear would be natural. But I tell you, this fear should be committed to the Lord. Sometimes when you're walking, we would think that there is a shadow. In the YouTube somewhere I saw little children afraid of their own shadows. They say that Alexander's horse, uh, the one which he inherited, uh, that was not obeying anybody. He knew the secret that this horse was seeing his own shadow and getting afraid. So he did some little tweaking and got this horse to obey. Our own shadow, it follows us. Sometimes our fears follow us. There is so much in our life from our childhood days, so many memories, so many stories, which are really building up in our heart and building an imagination and building dreams behind us in our hearts. I tell you, you have to crush those. Don't believe those dreams. Don't believe those fears. But there is something. You should be planning for your future, but not to be afraid about your future. Some people say, my fear came, it became true. My fears have come true. And maybe you're calling the fears to become true in our life. Beloved people of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ says in John 14 chapter, verse number 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. So what is the secret for a believer? It is peace. The peace which the master gives. What is this peace? That beautiful song it says, He's got the whole world. In a sense, he's got the whole wide world. In a sense, he's got the whole world. In a sense, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. This is absolutely true. The Lord says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. That peace which made him to face the cross. That peace, that, that peace which made him to face those uh, uh, fears and uh, that anguish of uh, uh, the separation from God the Father. That same peace the Lord will make you to inherit if you cast your burden upon him and see that he is going to perform wonderful things in your life. Beloved people of the Lord, Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. We will continue this tomorrow. And we're going to see that. And we're going to focus upon this, this particular word. Beloved people of the Lord, Romans 8.28 Don't care about the situations which are around you. Bring them to the Lord. If you lack wisdom, as James says, ask of Him. Each day when I wake up, I do a prayer, a quick prayer. The first prayer would be, Lord, I need your wisdom to deal with this day. To deal with all the twists and the turns which the day would bring upon me into my life because I am not a wise man and I seek his presence. When Peter asked the Lord the second prayer, he did not say, Lord, if it is you, save me. <laughs> God forbid if it is not him. It has to be him, even if it is not him, even if it is not the Lord, it has to be the Lord and says, Lord, save me. And the Lord immediately stretched out his hand and caught him. So Peter was almost close to the Lord. He was just about there. And he looked unto the Lord and said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And the Lord stretched his hand just at arm's length <laughs> and caught him 
his, with his hand and said to him, He did not pull him out, O oh, you of little faith. Why do you doubt? Why did you doubt? O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You must be saying, Lord, first pull me up and then you give me a couple of good strong scolding. But the Lord just went, may I believe Peter was bobbing in the water up and down, up and down. And the Lord was holding his hand, lesson at the right time. The lesson, first hand experience uh, for this man, Peter, the Lord holding his hand, Peter's hand, and the Lord is giving him a good piece of his mind and saying, Oh, you of little faith, oh my God, pull me first. Why did you doubt? Beloved people of the Lord. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now, we will close up with a verse from 1 Corinthians 16th chapter, verse number 13. There are two versions I want to bring to you from the New King James Version and the New International Version. The King, New King James Version says, Be alert, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Be alert. In the NIV Version it says, Be on your guard. Be on your guard. Be careful, be alert. Be watchful that no fear would haunt you, no fear would trouble you in the days to come. Beloved children of the Lord, you are afraid of many things. And as the man of God says in Psalm 34, 4, bring them to the Lord. Bring them to the Lord. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Don't be ashamed to say, Lord, I'm afraid. He will teach you. He will teach you not to be afraid because he will be with you through all eternity. Let us pray. Father God, we pray thee that your presence would be with us. Please come into our lives and make us to be your holy vessels. Increase us, build us and multiply us. In the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, we pray thee. If there is any fear in our heart, in our hearts, I pray thee, my God, that you cast it away so that we would come to know you better and be bold and strong, to be strong and courageous and to follow you, my God, wherever you go. Master, there are many things which makes our human mind to be afraid of. But I pray thee, you be in the center of our lives and grant us your peace and strength. In the name of our Lord Jesus of Nazareth, we pray thee. Amen. Beloved children of the Lord, be strong. Be strong and do not be afraid. Be alert. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and be strong. To be courageous and to be strong is in your hands. God bless you. Now, we'll be getting back to you again, once again tomorrow at the same time for the word of God in English. May God's presence be with you and strengthen you and do wonderful things in your life. We want to remind you about Daniel's prayer chain. Do register. Visit the website calvarylovofjesus.org and please register for a personal prayer time uh, to be a link in this marvelous prayer chain which is running across the globe. When we are going to pray for all those who are working out there to help us fight this disease and for those who are losing their beloved or who have lost their beloved. Let us pray for those who are afraid about the tomorrows. Let the Lord be in the center of your life and my life. Amen. God bless you. And Sister Jesse and I, we are glad to bring you this beautiful time. God be with you. Praise the Lord.